Welcome to everyone that's joining us tonight for the Central Community Transportation Network project. We're going to um, get started in just a moment, so we'll give everyone a few minutes to log in. To those of you that have just joined us, welcome. We're gonna give everyone just a few more minutes to get logged in. All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to the fourth public meeting for the Denver Central Community Transportation Network. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening to join us tonight. Before we continue on, uh, we'll have a quick word from our interpreter and then we'll move on to the rest of tonight's presentation. Buenas noches. Para escuchar la interpretación, haga el favor de conectarse usando una tableta o computadora y pulse el icono del globo en la parte inferior derecha de su pantalla y a ese punto seleccione el lenguaje de su preferencia, o sea, seleccione el canal de español. Muchas gracias. Great, thank you. So before we get started tonight, just a couple of reminders that there will be a, um, you can ask a question at any time during tonight's presentation. There is a Q&A window or a question and answer window that will be monitored where you'll be able to ask us questions tonight. And you'll be able to ask a question at any point during the meeting. So just to introduce some of the people that you'll be hearing from tonight, uh, my name is Riley Lamy, and I'm a city planner with Dottie and work in the transportation department uh, or on the multimodal team. Um, and so you'll be hearing from myself as well as from um, Brett, who is our engineer on the project. You'll also be hearing from Charlie Alexander, who is a um, on the project team, and Nikki Silva. And then questions will be uh, facilitated by Nora Newrider who is also on the project team as well. So those are some of the faces that you can expect to hear from tonight. Just want to briefly highlight some of the things that we'll talk about in tonight's presentation. We'll be giving you an overview about the overall community network process um, as a reminder of the, some of the meetings that we've had in the past and where we're at today. We'll also be giving you some important uh, updates on the schedule and the overall um, important changes on the projects. And then finally, we'll be sharing you with you a new tool uh, that will allow you to be able to provide feedback on the latest designs. And those designs that are shown on my screen include Lawrence Street, 25th Avenue, 26th Street, Vine Street, North William Street, East 16th Avenue, and 30th Street. So tonight's main focus is on those projects, but we'll also be sharing with you how you can stay informed and stay up to date on all of the projects that are a part of this process.
So just a reminder of what the com Central Community Transportation Network project is. Uh, Denver is implementing 125 miles of new bikeways all throughout the city on a three-year timeline. And these are projects that were identified from the Denver Moves Bicycles Plan that was developed in 2011 and then updated again in 2015. And while this mileage is being implemented all across the city, we are currently focused in three specific areas at the moment, which are the Northwest area of Denver, the Central area, and then the South Central. Tonight's focus is on the Central area. And as we are built, as we have been getting community input on these projects, we're all, we've also been hearing about, uh, not just about bike related, not just about bike related concerns, but also about uh, transportation related concerns all across the network. And we are trying to incorporate those uh, concerns and comments into our designs as we design the bikeways. So the, why are we building out or why are we rapidly building out 125 miles of bikeways and why are we focusing in on these areas? So a couple of different reasons. One of those is to improve safety. So uh, studies show that on streets where there are or is infrastructure that is that supports biking, it actually makes the street safer for everyone, regardless of whether you walk, bike, or drive. Another reason for building out bike infrastructure in the city is also so that because our city is growing and so that we can provide more ways to travel and get around the city, um, regardless of whether you choose to travel by bicycle, by driving, by um, taking transit or, or by walking. So we're trying to also provide our residents with more options. Um, as I mentioned just a minute ago, more people are moving to our city. So we also have to move more people on our streets. And so trying to find ways to move them more efficiently and again, provide them with more options for how they get around. So those are just a couple of the a couple of the reasons why we're investing and building out bike infrastructure across the city. So I want to touch on the some of the the schedule and a couple of the milestones on this process. This the Central Community Transportation Network process kicked off during March of 2020. Um, and that, that was the very first public meeting. It was also an in-person public meeting that happened right before the pandemic really began. Um, and that meeting was to really gather feedback about how we can improve transportation all over central Denver. We then had a second meeting to introduce to the community a number of different conceptual designs for bikeway projects that were in central Denver. And then we were able to gather community feedback on those projects. And then we came back uh, in kind of in last fall um, and presented to the community some updates and how we've changed those designs based on that feedback. Um, some projects are kind of moving further ahead and on a quicker timeline than others, while there's others that are kind of a little bit further behind. So we're going to talk about the projects that are sort of uh, tonight that are in the, the first package of improvements um, and what and those projects have continued to move forward in the design process and will um, and those are the ones that we're going to to show you how you can provide your feedback on those projects tonight um, and then those will continue to finalize the designs and the, the goal is with that first package of improvements to construct them um, over the next year or so. Um, and again, and then that, that second package of improvements would be within the following year. There's been a number of different ways that we've done outreach so far, um, including stakeholder groups, community meetings, we've done um, public surveys and, and uh, community office hours. So all of the, We've gotten a lot of great feedback from you as the community and as the residents um, that has helped to inform what these what the designs of these projects look like. So we're excited to be able to share with you an update on that tonight. So as I mentioned before, there's a number of different projects that were that are recommended specifically from the Denver Moves Bicycles Plan. And these are the ones that started out, we first presented again to the community uh, last the beginning of last summer, so 
some conceptual designs for the projects that are shown in the blue highlights on my screen. And then those projects, we got additional feedback on um, last September. And then um, where we're at now is kind of moving those into that ne the next phase of that design process. So again, these are projects that were identified first from the Denver Moose Bicycles Plan, um, and then are, have been continued to move through our design process. So this is what the, the, the again, what, what we're focused on is the area that's called the Central Denver Community Transportation Network, or CTN for short. Um, and this is what the network of streets looks like in central Denver that are, are basically streets that are comfortable to ride a bike on. And as you can see, it's sort of fragmented. There's um, spaces where the bi existing bike network doesn't connect to anything. Um, and so the goal of this kind of process is to really fix that. So that's why we're trying to implement so many bike projects at the same time. So that rather than having bike lanes that don't go to anywhere, we have a network of streets that are suitable for biking that connect to each other. Um, and so when these projects are built out, that is what the overall network will look like. One thing that I do want to highlight, you'll see that there's a little uh, a yellow circle that says further study that's on Bruce Randolph. Um, that project is sort of on hold right now. Um, we've been working with um, business owners along the corridor to to get their feedback. We realized earlier on in our process that we weren't hearing um, from everyone on that particular street. So we sort of have paused the design on that project in order to um, allow more time to work with the business owners. And, and that project has sort of been placed on hold uh, while we work on uh, continue moving forward with the other projects that are shown on the screen here. Next slide, please. And so there are some projects that you'll see that are that were are, will be constructed uh, this year, and that's improvements to 16th Street, um, mainly between Wine Coop and Chestnut, um, as, as well as 17th Street uh, in downtown. So between Wine Coop and uh, Tremont, Larimer Street uh, is another project, or sorry, another between Downing and or sorry, yeah, between uh, Downing and uh, about 18th. Uh, that's a one more project. And then there's a, a small project on Tremont Street where it'll be upgraded into a protected bike lane downtown. These projects are a little bit ahead of the, the design process because these were, um, the, the public engagement occurred through a plan that was called Denver Moves Downtown. And so all of the engagement for these projects happened through that process. And so that's why, these particular projects are moving a little bit ahead of some of the other ones that I'm about to talk about tonight. Um, and those projects will, will continue to move forward. The, there's five additional projects, and these are the ones that we're here to get your feedback about tonight. And again, those are tw uh, 25th Avenue, which is a neighborhood bikeway. And I'll explain what a neighborhood bikeway is in just a minute. Uh, Lawrence Street, and then 30th Street, as well as 20th or 26th Street, and then 16th Avenue is being upgraded to a protected bike lane uh, based on a recommendation from the Neighborhood Planning Initiative. And I will we'll cover that in a little bit more detail once we get further along in the presentation. So these particular projects are moving, um, we'll, be, we'll share with you tonight how we're going to be collecting your feedback on the designs. And then as a result of that, the, those projects will continue moving in further along into the design process and construction is anticipated to happen on these um, either this year or the next year. I don't know the exact um, construction schedule yet, but that, that's we're, we're still working through that. And then these are again projects that will are kind of in the next package of improvements again with um, Bruce Randolph being kind of on hold for right now uh, while we continue to work through that one. Uh, but the, the rest of these projects are um, will be coming back to you in the fall um, or, or later this summer to, to uh, get your feedback on the designs for those projects. So with that, I'm, we're going to transition and start talking about some major project updates that have happened um, since the last time that we we all met back in September. So I'm going to first 
I want to highlight something, which is what a neighborhood pikeway is. We've been getting a lot of questions about that in some of our previous public meetings. And so I want to just kind of highlight and take a, a few seconds to describe what those are. Uh, a lot of the projects that, that you've seen concept designs for in previous meetings um, are something that's called a neighborhood bikeway. And a lot of the projects that we're talking about tonight are are those neighborhood bikeway projects. And so I want to just briefly cover what those, what those are. So again, the neighborhood bikeway is a street that is shared by people biking and driving, and they're intended to be streets that have relatively low volumes of traffic and low speeds uh, that people can uh, feel comfortable sharing the street together. And how we achieve a neighborhood bikeway is generally through doing improvements that help to reduce speeds, um, such as traffic circles or um, things like what we call a, a, a bump out or a curb extension, which is just a fancy way of describing that we try to narrow the roadway in order to make it so that it's safer. Um, some other things that we might do are improvements at the intersections, um, that help to make it safer for a pedestrian or someone riding a bike to cross the street. And then we'll also do things that help to make both people riding bikes and pedestrians more visible. So a neighborhood bikeway, it's not a dedicated space for bicycles. It's not a bike lane like you've seen on other, you may have seen on other projects. Um, so again, if you hear us say the word neighborhood bikeway, um, that's really what we're talking about tonight is a, is a street that's really meant to be shared uh, by people biking and walking together. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it off to our next presenter who's going to walk you through some of those major project updates. Um, so I believe, Nikki, I will hand it off to you. Actually, Riley, I'm going to uh, take these next slides and then um, we'll have a brief uh, or we'll have an opportunity for Q&A uh, here in a few minutes. And then I'll hand it over to Nikki for the next section. So um, I wanted to give updates on two streets proposed for neighborhood bikeways and some of the changes um, uh, in the proposals for those streets from what has been shown uh, previously. The first of those is on Vine Street. So originally the proposal for this area was to have a neighborhood bikeway on Gaylord Street. A lot of the need for this facility is to provide a comfortable street um, close to City Park, uh, but not on York Street because of the high uh, traffic volume and traffic speed on York Street. So originally the proposal was for Gaylord. Um, we received several comments through the public process that uh, rather than um, uh, stopping at 28th Avenue to the north, that the community would really like to see this facility extended up to Bruce Randolph Avenue. Um, and for a couple reasons that um, uh, caused us to reconsider the street type or the street location and to shift this facility to Vine Street. So um, once you get to Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and 31st Avenue, um, Vine Street has a connection across those two streets, uh, which makes it possible to connect up to Bruce Randolph Avenue. Uh, also by being uh, an extra block west, of York Street. Um, it gives us some more flexibility for um, how the streets will operate. Um, and by getting some more distance from York Street, it makes it easier to design and, and easier to operate. So the map here shows the original alignment on Gaylord Street and the new alignment on Vine Street uh, from 21st Avenue to Bruce Randolph Avenue. Um, some of the uh, uh, benefits of this facility, um, obviously it connects to neighborhoods, Whittier and Cole. It also connects some of the destinations in these areas, including the Uptown Medical Center um, and City Park uh, via some of the, the uh, bikeways that it connects to, both existing bikeways as well as future bikeways, uh, some of which Riley described previously in terms of when those will be built. 
Um, it also uh, gives an opportunity to improve crossings of busier streets with different sorts of treatments that'll make it more comfortable and safer for people uh, as they're traveling north south. And uh, back to the, the ultimate reason why this was important to begin with is it gives an opportunity for that north south travel without having to be on York Street itself. Um, some of the features of this uh, neighborhood bikeway, uh, and this goes back to some of the, the photos that Riley showed in the introduction of, of what a neighborhood bikeway is. There will be five intersections with uh, the bump outs or the curb extensions, um, two intersections with neighborhood traffic circles, and then two intersections with treatments, uh, most likely traffic signals, uh, to help people cross uh, uh, the busier east-west streets. So the next facility that I'm gonna describe, and I guess the second of two, is the Williams Street uh, neighborhood bikeway. So um, back to the what was the original intent with this facility. Uh, originally, the intent of this facility was to connect uh, destinations sort of north of Capitol Hill and north of Cheeseman Park um, through the Uptown Medical Center and, and further north into, into the neighborhoods. Um, High Street was originally identified as the proposed alignment for this facility. Um, but as planning south of 21st Avenue was advancing, uh, Franklin Street was really identified as the priority for uh, uh, north-south travel uh, connecting to destinations to the south and also the most feasible connection uh, into Cheeseman Park. So uh, what was really important about this facility in the very beginning was that it provided that connectivity to the south and provided sort of a good midpoint connection um, between Downing Street, obviously very busy street, and, and York Street. So once um, the need to connect to Franklin Street was identified, uh, we did some analysis and determined that it would be much more feasible and a better user experience to use William Street uh, north of 21st Avenue instead of High Street. So you can see this map that shows the original proposed alignment on High, on High Street rather, and the new proposed alignment on Williams, uh, Williams Street. Um, so some of the, the benefits of this um, facility include the connections to Uptown Medical Center, including the St. Joseph Hospital, various schools and various parks. Um, also like the facility on um, Vine Street, this will connect to a variety of existing and proposed intersecting bikeways um, and uh, includes a variety of, uh, uh, well, when crossing some of the other intersections, uh, provides some improvements and, and some existing uh, treatments that will make intersections and streets comfortable to cross. And then again, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the benefits of this uh, uh, alignment is that it gives that sort of good central connection between Downing Street and York Street without being on the busier streets themselves. Um, some of the features of the William Street uh, neighborhood bikeway will include uh, bump outs or curb extensions at four different intersections. And then um, at 21st Avenue, uh, a uh, always stop um, to make it easier for, um, for people to cross 21st Avenue and then for all the different modes of travel that are, that are arriving at that intersection. So we're gonna take a break. I've seen some questions in coming through the Q&A. Um, so we'll take a break and, and answer some of those now. And I'll ask Nora to, to sort of organize those and present them to the panel here. Thanks, Charlie. Um, I think we'll start off with a couple of questions uh, related to Bruce Randolph. Um, because there's an opportunity to upvote in this forum, uh, there have been a number of uh, comments that there is disappointment that that Bruce Randolph is being deferred. Um, and I guess the question is, is, is there no new um, bike related infrastructure planned in Clayton if Bruce Randolph is deferred? 
So, and just so one thing to clarify, I can take that question and uh, that's a great question. So one thing I wanted to clarify is that when I say that it's being placed on hold, um, it just means that we haven't done, you know, we, we've kind of met with the business owners last February to um, kind of hear their concerns because we realized that we hadn't heard adequately their needs and hadn't heard from them during our, our prior public outreach process. And so we did hear from them as well. Um, we haven't, there hasn't been any further kind of analysis on Bruce Randolph because regardless, uh, that was kind of a project that was part of our, our second package. Um, so we haven't necessarily done anything more on that project from a design perspective or from an analysis perspective. Um, we've been focused on the ones that we're kind of covering tonight. Um, and then we will kind of during our later phase, we'll continue um, kind of getting back in, getting back into that project and understanding um, whether or not it's staying the way that it is, whether or not we're picking a different quarter altogether. There's just a lot of um, more work that still needs to be done um, on that project and we don't have a, an update quite yet. So it's kind of on hold in that way and that there's no further, further updates um, on, on that one. Thanks, Riley. Um, this may be a question for, for Brett um, or, or certainly anybody who can jump in to answer this very specific question related to Bruce Randolph um, as, it, as Vine crosses. Uh, this is a major crossing, speeds are high. There are horrific crashes at York nearby. Um, please consider a signal at the intersection of Bruce Randolph and Vine. Um, and I don't know if that uh, design initiative can be addressed by, by Brett or by other, another member of the team. Nora, I can um, try to, to tackle that one. So that's um, something that we can uh, look into. Thanks for that, that comment about the concern at Vine and Bruce Randolph. Um, for a, a kind of more general answer is when we're looking at um, when a bikeway crosses a busier street or the intersection of two bikeways, there's a series of data we collect and different criteria that we analyze to understand whether uh, or what types of treatments are necessary there. And those things account for things like the uh, volume of traffic, things like the speed of traffic, things like the crash history. So with this information in mind, we can uh, look into that and uh, make sure that whatever we propose for the intersection of Vine and Bruce Randolph um, is appropriate for the, the, the context of the intersection. Thanks, Charlie. Um, we do have a question from Robert uh, regarding uh, 16th Avenue and crossing at Colorado. Um, is there gonna be an effort to um, to prioritize safe bike and ped crossing. Riley, do you want me to take that one? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a, a good comment and one that we heard from our, um, our stakeholders in our community working group previously. Um, if I understand correctly, it's just the concern of crossing Colorado Boulevard specifically at 16th Avenue. Um, which you know, west of Colorado is, is a great facility. Um, and obviously Colorado sort of presents that barrier. Um, we looked into this based on similar feedback and the, the challenge that we have um, is uh, kind of twofold. Um, one is that Colorado Boulevard is a CDOT highway. So the Colorado Department of Transportation operates and owns the, the road. Um, so uh, Denver uh, sort of has to work through um, the Department of Transportation on that uh, and doesn't ultimately have control over the street. Um, the other sort of functional challenge is the signal spacing at 17th Avenue and at Colfax Avenue. So in light of the, um, the that it's a, a CDOT roadway and the, the traffic speed and volume and the signal spacing, um, what's been proposed before and what is still the most feasible way of getting across Colorado 
is a connection that would use um, Garfield Street. It would be 16th Avenue to Garfield Street. The city is installing a signal at six, I'm sorry, at 17th and Garfield for people to cross into City Park. And then using the, the pathways in City Park connecting to 17th Avenue, east of Colorado Boulevard, there's proposals, uh, not as a part of, of what we're talking about tonight, but further into the future to add a bikeway on 17th Avenue. And that would be the connection um, from west of Colorado to east of Colorado in this area. Thanks, Charlie. The uh, Robert actually asked a very similar question related to the other large arteries in central Denver. So Lincoln, Broadway, Colfax, 17th, and how to prioritize bikers and walkers yeah. on those major arteries. I think probably Riley or Brett have more information about those streets than I do. Yeah, so I'll take on the, the first part of that question. Um, or, so we, as a part of the, the community network process, one of the things that we asked the community was uh, to help us determine where are the top locations where there are concerns about biking, walking, and taking transit, particularly with getting across the street. And, and we kind of asked that question in the very beginning of this process about um, about streets that aren't not just the streets where you can bike on today, but also some of those, you know, anywhere in the central Denver area. And a lot of those, where some of those top places that came up were on some of those major arterial streets, such as Colfax and York. Um, Broadway and Lincoln actually came up particularly high on the list. Um, and what we're doing with that feedback is that we're, we're actually kind of taking those top locations, so the top uh, intersections and the top corridors um, that came up based on that feedback. And we are actively looking at ways that we can address some of those multimodal concerns, um, wh whether that be identifying um, new crossing locations or identifying new, um, or identifying changes to the signals, that kind of thing, or whether it be uh, things that we can identify to our projects that we can identify to go look for funding in the future to um, to build improvements. So Broadway and Lincoln are two of those streets that we're taking kind of a, a deeper dive into as a part of this process to identify potential near term and long term improvements. Um, Brad, if you have anything that you wanted to add just on that note, um, feel free to jump in. Yeah, I'll just add, um, in addition to kind of what Riley was saying, kind of overall taking some of that multimodal bike ped feedback, more specifically, as you might have uh, noticed in the map, our community network um, bikeways do include uh, Lawrence, Larimer, and 16th Ave, which all cross Broadway. And so as part of those bikeways, uh, certainly, <laughs> Um, since those bikeways cross those major arterials, we'll be looking to improve the biking crossings at those specific locations. And then, yeah, exactly what Riley mentioned, we're also collecting kind of the overall multimodal feedback uh, to advance those in other ways through other uh, city processes and programs. So, yeah. Thanks, Brad. Um, this is another question along those same lines and, and may fall into that category of, of uh, collecting general information about how to make these crossings safer. But um, a question was asked in particular about Ogden and Williams crossing Colfax and um, what bike facilities might look like at those particular intersections. And I don't know if, if Brett, that might be. Yeah, sure. So uh, same thing. So. It is kind of the uh, same deal. We are kind of collecting that overall feedback. Um, I, I will say that um, kind of as Riley mentioned before, uh, this central network is one of three community transportation networks that's going on in the city. The one to the south of us is the uh, South Central Community Network. They do have, uh, I believe, one at least one or two bikeways that are crossing Colfax, and certainly they will be improving those crossings. Um, I believe one of them is Franklin and the other one is, I'm not, I'm actually not remembering right now. Um, 
but in, in addition, we're also collecting the multimodal feedback that will push forward to other projects and programs as well. And I did want to add, at least for Williams, that um, south, basically south of 21st Street, the Williams Street Bikeway will actually align onto Franklin. Um, so the, there are improvements that are planned for Franklin and Williams as a part of that neighborhood bikeway so that it connects into Cheeseman Park. Thanks, Riley. Um, uh, this is mean, probably a... uh, oh, sorry, Franklin and Colfax. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Um, and this may be a question for you too, Riley. Um, moving on to uh, actual treatments, um, John asks, do we have data confirming that bump outs are actually slowing motorists? Brett, since you're the engineer in the room, I might let you answer that question. <laughs> Sure, and I might, I might have Charlie chime in here too. A great question. Um, predominantly, when we talk about bulb outs or curb ex bump outs, bulb outs, curb extensions, or whatever you call it, uh, predominantly we are looking to increase the overall visibility of pedestrians, right, by aligning them with the parking lane and reducing the crossing distance for pedestrians. Um, but as, as you alluded to, uh, doing that also has the secondary benefit of having what we call visual narrowing on the street, and particularly at the intersection. So going through it, it, it visually, by having the vertical elements there, it visually narrows that travel space, slowing down speeds, particularly slowing, encouraging slower turning speeds. And so um, a lot of time when we're doing these bulb outs, the existing condition um, as the corners are designed, uh, you can take pretty fast turns through those intersections. So one of the primary uh, benefits of these bulb outs is to tighten up that turn so that ve vehicular, vehicular uh, drivers um, can't take those turns quickly. As far as data, um, we, we are gonna be collecting data on some of these uh, treatments here in Denver specifically, but um, from a bump out standpoint, um, yes, there's, there's been research on this dating all the way back into the 2000s and maybe even um, beyond. I know of some that was done in uh, Idaho, uh, the uh, National Association for City Transportation Officials, also known as NACDO, has collected a lot of this research and proliferated it. So, I mean, if um, I think that was, uh, I think that was John who asked that question. If you're uh, more uh, curious about the specific research, we can certainly send some along after um, after the meeting. And um, so I think we'll go ahead and move on to the next part of our presentation. And there is time, there will be an additional question and answer session. We just want to make sure that we have enough time to kind of um, get into the bulk of the presentation. Um, in just a minute, we're going to be sharing it with you some designs on, on a few projects and we'll be sharing with you at the end a tool that's will that's new to the city that will allow you to provide your input and comments directly on the design. Um, one quick thing that I did want to mention is in the con in the early concept phase so last summer when we were first introducing all of these projects uh, to the public and kind of mentioned uh, and th this happened again last last summer um, we showed these things that were called um, speed cushions or speed lumps that were in in our in our conceptual design some of those because they're new to to denver um, we have kind of have put those on pause but we are going to be piloting them at specific locations um, and that they're going to be piloted on 25th street between lafayette and franklin and between williams and vine and then we will also be piloting chicanes on Lawrence Street between um, 30, uh, 34th and 35th Street. Um, and so again, you might have seen some of these recommended in the previous concepts that were shown last summer. Um, and those, you might not see them on the latest concepts. And again, that's because they're being piloted. The idea that is if that, that assuming that that pilot is successful that we'll be able to go back and then add those uh, at a later date. But the streets that we're starting off with these new treatments are our 25th and uh, Lawrence Street. So just wanted to, to clarify that. 
So again, the projects that we'll be looking for your input tonight on are, uh, are shown on the screen. Um, the projects that are kind of moved further into the design process because we've already kind of shared these with the community before and are now moving along the design process um, are 25th Avenue, Lawrence Street, 30th Street, 16th Avenue, and 26th Street. And then the projects that are new because we shifted the alignment, uh, which are Williams Street and Vine Street. We're also looking for your input on those. Um, but again, those are kind of not as far along in the design process since we, um, since those are, are essentially new projects. Um, so I'm gonna shift it over to our next presenter who's gonna provide you with some more information about those. Awesome, thanks Riley. So the first one I'll touch on is the 25th Avenue neighborhood bikeway. Um, and this project, the limits are from Lafayette Street to Vine Street um, and, and connects uh, many destinations along this corridor, just to name a few, Whittier Elementary School and City Park Golf Course further to the east. Um, it also intersects with many um, proposed bikeways along um, its alignment. So um, Marion Street and William Street and Vine Street proposed neighborhood bikeways. Um, and there's also an existing bike lane further to the west of Lafayette Street that kind of uh, connects to, I believe, Clarkson Street. So this connection will actually basically provide um, an east-west connection kind of through this whole neighborhood to Downing Street. And then to high level give kind of um, some of the improvements that you'll see in this 60% uh, design. So there's six intersections with bump outs, one intersection with a traffic circle, and then they'll, as Riley had just mentioned, um, this will be one of the pilot corridors um, for speed cushions. So there'll be speed cushions between Lafayette Street and Franklin Street, as well as between William Street and Vine Street. Um, and you'll have noticed probably um, since the last time when you guys reviewed the concepts that, uh, that some things have changed. Um, so just to name a few, um, bump outs were added at Franklin Street, William Street, and High Street. Um, and Vine Street was changed from a traffic circle to bump outs and converted to an all-way stop um, and marked crosswalks at Humboldt and Race Street. The next one that we'll be looking for your input on that I'll discuss is Lawrence Street. So the Lawrence Street corridor is a neighborhood bikeway um, from 24th Street to Downing Street. And it connects many restaurants and shops and businesses along this corridor um, and also connects to many proposed um, bikeways as well. So 26th Street and 30th Street proposed neighborhood bikeways it'll connect with. Um, and it really, uh, connecting to Downing, it provides a connection to the, the Cole and Clayton neighborhoods um, and to downtown. And for, for things that you'll notice in the concept, so there's five intersections with bump outs, three intersections with traffic circles, two intersections with ped refuge islands, and then there's also diversion elements at 29th Street and 33rd Street. So um, this kind of snip from the 60% the design here on the right shows what the diversion element would look like. And due to the high volumes on this roadway um, to make it more comfortable for cyclists um, at 33rd Street, it'll this um, median here will be restricting southbound vehicle access, but will be allowing southbound bicycle access through this intersection. And similarly at 29th Street, it will be restricting northbound access for vehicles, but allowing it for bicyclists. And then as Riley mentioned as well, um, there will, Lawrence Street's also a pilot location for the chicanes for the central network. So there'll be ch chicanes um, between 34th and 35th Street. And then just some things to highlight that changed from last time. Um, pedestrian refuge islands were added at 25th and 32nd Streets. A traffic circle was added at 26th Street. A bulb out was added at 27th, 30th, and 34th. And traffic diversion, as I had just mentioned, um, is, was also added along this corridor. 
And then the next one I'll discuss is the 30th Street neighborhood bikeway. So this corridor goes from 25th Street to Downing Street. Um, I'm sorry, that is not right. That should be Blake Street <laughs> to Downing Street. Apologize for that. Um, similarly, this corridor links restaurants and shops and businesses um, and connects with the Lawrence Street proposed neighborhood bikeway, as well as many existing bikeways um, that are kind of already on the ground, including Champa and Stow and Larimer and Blake. Um, and this really connects the Curtis Park and Rhino neighborhoods, the Cole and Whittier neighborhoods. There's kind of on the east side of Downing Street here, um, the 28th Avenue bikeway will be implemented. Um, so it will really uh, uh, help the connections between those neighborhoods. And then um, just to highlight some things that you'll see in this design, there's five intersections with bump outs, one intersection with a traffic circle, and one intersection with pedestrian refuge islands. Um, and things that um, have changed since the concept phase um, were the always, there's now an always stop at Blake Street, bump outs added at Lawrence, um, paint and post curb extensions at Welton Street, and then um, the T-Rex project, which is the temporary recreation streets uh, along this corridor, um, improvements were just installed at Curtis in California, and those will continue forward as well. With that, I'll turn this over to Riley to chat about the last two projects. So the next project I want to talk about is the 16th Avenue protected bike lane, and that is from Broadway to Humboldt Street. And then um, also there's a small section of it that's being improved uh, at City Park Esplanade. So as many of you know, there already is a bike lane um, on the street. All of the projects that we've been talking about so far have been um, neighborhood bikeways. So those have been, those have been um, shared streets. This is the, the one project that we're talking about tonight that's an actual uh, bike lane, so dedicated space for bikes. Um, and like I said, there already is a, a dedicated space for bikes that exists today. Um, what's being recommended or, or done here is to upgrade it into a protected bike lane. And the reason that this is being done is that we received a lot of feedback about this bike lane during the neighborhood planning initiative for East Central Denver um, that just wrapped up last year. And some of that feedback was about improving the safety of the street uh, um, and, and, and making it uh, or providing a, a protected bike lane. Um, some of the, what, what's being done here, and we'll, we'll talk about this in just a minute, um, again, is to upgrade it from a, a, to a protected bike lane from the just painted bike lane that it exists today. So this is a really important uh, bike connection that connects some very high dense neighborhoods into the downtown core. And so part of what we're, we'll be looking at through this project is to create lower stress crossings. So improving um, the improving some of those busy cross streets. And then again, just in enhancing that connection that already exists today, um, all the way from downtown into City Park Esplanade. So you'll notice on the screen, some of the things that are being done here, and this is my image that are, are, you can see in my image on my screen, that there will be a physical barrier between uh, people riding bikes and traveling vehicles. And that will be done either through some, uh, whether that be posts or flexible bollards or um, through rubber curb stops. Those are done again to separate people riding bikes from, um, from people driving and provide an additional safe connection. We'll also be doing some improvements, particularly at the intersections. You can see on the screen that there are what's called a curb extension or a bulb out. Um, and that basically just means that you sort of um, narrow the roadway a little bit and that helps to reduce speeds of, um, of, of cross traffic. And it also helps to reduce the speeds of turning vehicles so that they can see, they have the ability to be able to see uh, bikes that are coming down the street before they make those turns. So those are some of the safety improvements that are planned for 16th Avenue. Um, and then there's also green conflict markings 
that will be added uh, just as it helps drivers know that they should also be looking out for bikes as well as pedestrians that are, are crossing the street. This uh, particular project is our, one of our, this is our highest bike ridership corridor, one of our highest bike ridership corridors in the city. Um, and what that means is that there is a significant number of people that ride bikes. Um, and that's why this is being prioritized to upgrade it from what it exists today. And then the next project that I want to talk about is the 26th Street Neighborhood Bikeway. This project actually started planning um, several years ago back in 2017 as a part of the Five Points Neighborhood Transportation Management Plan. And through that process, we worked with the community to come up with a way to make 26th Street a neighborhood bikeway through a series of intersection improvements. This particular project also um, connects several neighborhoods. So it's connecting North Capitol Hill with the Five Points neighborhood um, and providing a, a safe way to get across on a bicycle and is continuing to connect into the, the rest of the downtown bicycle network. So as a part of this project, some of the, the features that will be or that are being planned for it are um, adding those curb extensions or bulb outs that are again designed to reduce to narrow the roadway and to slow down traffic on the street. And then also to, uh, we'll be adding some uh, are adding traffic circles on two different intersections along the 26th Street neighborhood bikeway. Um, some of the things that have also changed or that we've added since the last time this particular project was discussed with the public is that we've also added um, what's called something that's called a rapid rectangular flashing beacon. I know it's a long and weird word, um, but that's an image that you can see on the screen. It's basically where if you want to cross the street, you, there's a button and a um, light will activate that that requires drivers to yield to the pedestrian um, and allows the, the pedestrian to be able to safely cross the street. So that is being recommended or installed at, uh, at 26th and Stout. And then we've also will be adding some additional curb extensions or bulb outs at uh, Walnut, Larimer and Lawrence Street. Um, and then adding a couple, uh, some additional traffic circles at Arapahoe and California Street. So um, those particular projects, I know we, we mentioned um, quite a few projects tonight that are kind of going to the next phase of design in this first round. And I wanna kind of just reiterate the fact that the, the, what we're showing you tonight is based on months of, of feedback that we've gotten um, through not only public meetings, but stakeholder meetings, working, talking to different businesses, uh, talking to, you know, through surveys, that kind of thing. And so what is being, what is being recommended uh, from a design perspective is based on the feedback that you provided um, through all of these different touch points, as well as from what our data is showing us. So where are there issues with speeding or where are there challenges with crashes? So we've taken all of that information um, and, and that's kind of what's reflected in the designs that you're seeing. We still want your feedback on this next process or on this next phase of the design. So that way we can make sure that we get it right uh, before these kinds of things go to construction. And so we're, I'm gonna be presenting tonight to you in just a moment, a tool that we'll be using um, to, to be able to provide feedback on the designs themselves, um, especially, and actually one more, if you can go back to the, the slide previous. Um, I also want to touch on a couple of other things, though. If there are questions that you have, uh, you can email the, the Denver Moves at denvergov.org. You can email the project team um, for specific questions. There's also a way to be able to schedule office hours. So if there's a, you know, a, a design that you're having trouble understanding or you just want to talk to the project team more about a particular issue that's on, um, on one of the streets that was just presented, um, there is a way to be able to sign up for office hours, and that is at uh, bit.ly forward slash Denver Moves Networks. If you click on the central page, you'll be able to find a, uh, an option to sign up to talk about uh, 
or you'll be able to find a way to sign up for office hours to talk with the project team. And then finally, you can also call the project hotline to be able to give additional feedback at 303-223-6575. And that's an additional way that you can uh, pr uh, provide feedback or ask a question and then a project team member will get back to you. So I'm going to be introducing a new tool, though, that's called Conveo, and that is uh, what we're going to be using to, uh, or another tool that we have available to us to be able to collect your feedback on the latest phase of designs for these projects. And the comment period will be open through May 25th for you to be able to go into the, the, the projects and kind of look around and, and provide your feedback. So I'm actually going to share my screen real quick and. Um, and show you how you can provide that feedback for us. So there is a, a website and that is um, bit.ly and, and we'll, we'll uh, put this in the, there's a slide on this that we'll go back to, but it is uh, bit.ly forward slash central CTN comment. So again, that's uh, bit.ly forward slash central CTN comment. And that brings you to this landing page that is for the, uh, for the central CTN. And it shows you all of the different projects where you can provide uh, feedback. So let's say, for example, that you're really interested in the 25th Avenue neighborhood bikeway. Um, you can click on that one. You can hit view design. And then it takes you to the page that describes the 25th Avenue Neighborhood Bikeway. Um, and just in case you wanted to know more information about what a, a neighborhood bikeway is, there's a fact sheet that you can click on that will allow you to uh, see more details about what a neighborhood bikeway is. So we have that on there as well. Um, but then at the bottom, you'll notice that there is a place to be able to actually provide comments. And so um, what that does is you, you'll be able to kind of see it page by page. So on 25th, for example, it starts off at uh, Lafayette Street and then continues on. And so you'll be able to scroll through the design. So let's say that you live on, um, live on 25th and Gilpin and you had a comment that you wanted to make about the traffic circle that's proposed right here. Um, you all you have to do is just click on click on it with your mouse, and then um, your name and your email is totally optional. Um, but you can add in add in any comment that you would like. Um, so basically, you can provide you can provide your feedback that way, um, and then you would just hit submit, and then that gets logged in as a comment. Um, so again, this will be open up until May 25th um, for you to be able to provide comments here. You also can add general comments to the page. So if there's something that you just kind of wanted to tell us about the corridor as a whole and not just about a particular intersection or a particular um, design feature, um, you can tell us that in this general comment section. And then at the bottom, there is some more information that just explains kind of what all of the different design features are that are being proposed as a part of these as a part of these projects. Um, so that's just kind of one example. A couple of things that I also want to mention as a part of this is as you are going through these, depending on the particular project, you may have to zoom in to be able to see what the to be able to see the design in greater detail. Uh, there is a zoom feature so that you could see what in more detail what those designs look like, and then you can scroll over um, just as I'm doing to be able to see. We do also have some call out boxes that explain what these things are, uh, so that and in kind of what it's trying to achieve. So, for example, this one. Uh, if you say that you're trying to understand what this means, um, this in blue, this little call out box will explain uh, what, what that particular feature is. So once again, all of these projects are on that main landing page. Um, there's also a way to sign up for office hours directly from that page. So you can click on that and that'll take you to a place to be able to sign up for office hours. 
The email address that I mentioned before is also there as well. So if you just have a general project question or feedback for the team, that is, um, that is there as well. And then again, that number four, the, the project hotline is there. Uh, so I'll just kind of give one more example uh, just to kind of show what these look like. So I'll click on the, the 26th Street just so that we can um, test that one out again. Uh, so once again, just kind of explaining what the, the project is, that it's a neighborhood bike lane. It also explains the extents there. And then um, it will pull up the individual design plans. And the way that these are showing is it's kind of showing them block by block. So that way, if there's a particular um, block that you're really interested in or kind of want to zoom in into a little bit more detail, it will give you the ability to be able to do that. Um, so again, you can see um, here what the different design details are that are proposed for that particular street. One thing that I also want to mention is if you are viewing this from a, a, mobile, a mobile phone, there is an option to be able to click uh, on that link, which will give you a page that doesn't have all of the, the, the top details on here. Uh, and that will help just make it so that it's a little bit more clear to view on your phone. We do encourage you to view these from a desktop computer. That's probably going to be the, the easiest way, or from a laptop, um, that's probably going to be the best way to view these, but they are viewable from a mobile phone as well. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go back to the main presentation so that way we have time to go into questions. But again, did want to just mention that site that we mentioned, and, and Nikki, you can go ahead and reshare your screen. Uh, but again, that the way to get to this, this project is the bit.ly forward slash central CTN comment. And that's uh, what's on the screen as well. So, and that's allowing you to be able to provide comments on those designs. Um, and once more, they'll be open until May 25th. So, um, with that, we can go to our next round of questions. Great, thanks, Riley. Um, I am, uh, there are a number of really good questions um, in the Q&A, so we'll try and do them all justice to the best of our abilities. Uh, I am gonna start with Joel's uh, query about Stout, which I believe goes to Brett. Um, any news on future planning for Stout and completing the protected bike lane? Um, he did have a follow-up question, which I wanna throw in there as, as well. Um, part B, uh, is the Stout intersection with 26th um, RRFB going to take the place of the mid-block light just a block away on Stout? Uh, this is an uncommon, an uncommon traffic control location. Um, and uh, Joel is concerned that without a comprehensive rethink of Stout, um, that speeds um, are, are gonna be dangerous. Uh, thank you, Nora. That's a great question, Joel. Um, as you might know, as a result of the five points NTMP, the Neighborhood Transportation Management Program, uh, we are actually looking to enhance the existing protected bike lane that's there between Broadway and 26th, um, where the, the, the upcoming neighborhood bikeway is. Um, the, in kind of referring to your first question about, and I think you're probably referring to the fact that the rest of Stout is a buffered bike lane. Um, I think, so that, that was originally when that was, uh, when Stout was installed as a PBL, uh, we, we went away from doing a, pro, a protected bike lane there due to some neighborhood concerns about parking during the initial installation. Um, but some time has gone by since then. Um, and another idea that came out of the five points in TMP was the idea to convert Stout Street to two way from one way to two way. And so um, we're actually, a, and we're about to begin that study uh, uh, of converting Stout to two-way, and it will look at a more holistic view of Stout Street. Um, and so there will be, uh, so I'd encourage you to stay involved with that. Um, there will be a whole uh, outreach process that's separate from CTNs. 
that we will start. Um, so, so keep your eye out for that because we will be having those conversations. And I think as part of that, to answer the second part of your question, um, Stout and 26th Street um, really needs, uh, beyond an RFB, which will be there in the interim for our neighborhood bikeway, really needs, uh, likely needs a signal. And if we do install a signal there, yes, that mid-block signal would basically, and it, it, for all intents and purposes, be relocated to the Stout and 26th Street neighborhood bikeway. But again, that's, that, that would be something that would need to um, come be confirmed through our Stout Street two-way conversion study, which will, that process will begin later this year and um, we'll be reaching out. Thanks, Brett. Um, we have a number of uh, really good questions about 16th, which I'm gonna try and package up um, and have you jump in again, Brett, on, on 16th. Um, the questions start with uh, how, how can, you reconcile the shared streets uh, equipment that is currently on there with the uh, plans for a PBL and uh, a, a protected bike lane. And related to that, why stop the protected bike lane at Park? Um, is it possible to extend it to Franklin? And then a final question, if in fact the shared street equipment stays on, 16th, is there an opportunity to widen the protected bike lane? Sorry, that's yeah. a lot of pieces. No, that's all right. I might have to have you repeat those eventually. Um, <laughs> that's okay. So as, as Riley mentioned, um, what, one thing that came out of the neighborhood planning initiative was to upgrade this highly used street, 16th Ave, to a protected bike lane uh, where we can. Um, and I say where we can because uh, the, the portion that is included in this uh, community network that we're going to be upgrading um, is the portion of 16th Ave that does not have parking where we do have width to be able to install a protected bike lane that's between Broadway and more or less Park Ave and then, and then York to Esplanade. Um, the temporary recreational streets, the shared street program that you referenced, um, that uh, the intent of that was to be temporary. And so to answer your question um, on the section of where, we're, where we would be installing a protected bike lane, it would then become that protected bike lane. Um, there is another effort to try to iterate on that shared street in that section between our two protected bike lane sections. And so um, the future of that is, is um, potentially a shared street. Um, so, uh, there is potential there for that shared street to, to live on in that middle middle section. Um, and I think that's all, I answered all the questions. Nora, tell me, let me know if I did it. <laughs> um, with with ex expanding the width of the protected bike lane because of the shared street status? Gotcha, yeah. Um, so by nature of the shared, and this is, this gets into a whole nother conversation, but which, which we need to have eventually, but um, the nature of a shared street is that bike would share the roadway space. And so um, if, if, if 16th Ave were indeed a shared street in the future, the bike lane would technically become obsolete. So uh, there would there'd be no need to, to widen that bike lane because it would be a shared street, uh, low volume, low speed, that is just like a neighborhood bikeway of ours. Um, hope that answers all the questions. Yep, it does. Thanks, Brian. Just to clarify, in a section of 16th that is uh, being upgraded to a PBL, the protected bike lane will be wider than what the bike lane is today. Yes. yes. And how that's being achieved is by narrowing the, the actual travel way of the, um, or the effective width of one of the, the lanes that you drive down. Um, so we're able to expand the travel lane, or sorry, the bike lane because of that. Okay, thank you, Riley. Um, we do have a question from John uh, regarding um, uh, stop signs at a roundabout and understanding how roundabouts work. Isn't the whole purpose of a roundabout that stop signs are not necessary? A great question. I'll just take a stab at it and then Charlie, yeah, feel free to chime in. Uh, 
<clears throat> so uh, the, per the roundabouts themselves, the modern roundabout, it, when we actually talk about roundabouts is a very large roundabout that actually is, is different than the traffic circles that we see on our neighborhood bikeways. Um, from on these traffic circles, sometimes they're installed with stops, sometimes they're not, um, and they're installed with yield control. Um, as we've been um, testing these out throughout Denver, um, you know, I think right now you see a lot of them with side street stop control. Um, as we move forward, uh, we will be, and actually on 30th Street, where we recently I did our most recent T-Rex, um, those traffic circles are all yield control, so more similar to a modern roundabout. And so um, that, that's how we will be treating those at least moving forward at this point. But of course, always monitoring that, consistently iterating on it where, where necessary. Sure, I don't know if there's anything to add there. Uh, no, I think this is really more to, to local practice that you've sort of described Denver's evolution of, of um, kind of moving from stop control to, to yield. So I think that makes sense. Um, John actually has another question regarding um, uh, a, a tool, um, a, a street treatment being um, if we're going to use primarily bikeways and sharrows. Um, why are we not? Um, we're probably going to need more diversion of car traffic. Why isn't diversion used more often in um, these planning initiatives? So I can take a stab at it. So there is diversion being recommended on um, Lawrence Street. And as I mentioned, because some of these traffic calming treatments are new to Denver, they are being kind of done as a pilot basis. So being done uh, particularly on Lawrence Street as one of them to start with. Once and assuming that the pilot goes successful, we will be able to start doing things like diversion or um, elements that are designed to reduce kind of cut through traffic. Um, we will be able to do those in ad additional locations and on some of these streets that have been uh, proposed for bikeways. And we have been working with our, you know, the, the, some of the, the typical players at hand, including the Denver Fire Department on those. Um, as you might know, the Denver Complete Street Design Guidelines effort was recently completed that uh, kind of gave us our, the ability to start building some of the, the, these traffic calming improvements and so while we will be adding them on certain streets in the future, again, just kind of starting them out as a pilot because of the fact that they're new to Denver. Um, and Brett, feel free to add anything. I missed anything. No, that was great, Riley. The only thing I would add is um, the locations, we actually do have one at Lawrence, like Riley said, actually, I think, I believe there's two maybe, I'll be wrong on that and then one on 21st Ave as well. And the way that we choose to so select locations for that is based on where we need to get traffic volumes down. And so, as you might know, we do data collection and analysis to see where the volumes are too, uh, too high from a best practice standpoint uh, to consider that a neighborhood bikeway. And so if they are too high and we wanna get those volumes down, that's that's where we apply the diverters. So all these uh, locations are, are selected from a data-driven uh, process, but also in collaboration with all of our partners and, and, and through conversation with the community, so. Great, thanks. Um, Brett and Riley. Um, Fred has a comment about uh, Williams, um, and I think there's a question in here too. Um, please consider extending the Williams facility to the 39th Avenue Greenway. And I don't know if Riley, if you can address any consideration that might have been given to that. Yeah, we're looking at as a part of this process uh, recommendations to expand the overall network. And so beyond what we have planned today and what we have funding for to construct, we are also looking at how we can uh, be able to go back in and make additional improvements in, um, in the future. 
And I know that there was a comment, for example, about um, other, what other projects are being planned in the Clayton neighborhood. Um, and so that's something that we have been doing as well is, you know, while we have the funding for the, the initial projects that are moving forward with construction is also kind of thinking forward to the future and um, additional projects or additional um, bikeways that will continue to connect into that neighborhood um, and we'll, we'll find, uh, continue to look for ways to fund those so that those can be a, a part of the network as well. Uh, Riley, this is probably a question for you as well from Stephanie regarding 26th Street uh, between Colorado and York. Um, Stephanie wonders when speeding and traffic slowing efforts are coming to Sky the neighborhood of Skyland. Um, speed bumps, roundabouts are her preference uh, because there's only one stop sign um, mm -hmm. along that route that drivers uh, tend to blow through. Uh, and protection is needed for children and families walking and biking in the neighborhood. Great question. So we are kind of evaluating based on all the feedback that we heard uh, from, from this process so far, potential candidate locations where we can look at, uh, where we can look at improvements for, or treatments that would help to reduce speeding um, and improve crossings. And so even if they're, for example, uh, the 26th Street between Colorado and York. Um, while we don't have a, a bike project planned there, um, I know York Street came up a lot in our as kind of comments that we received from the community, and and we are kind of currently evaluating that again, looking for ways that we can um, investigate or identify potential improvements to be made there in the future. Thanks, Riley. Um, we do have a, a comment from Mike that has a number of other interested parties. And I think, um, Brett, you might want to take this one. The notion that a protected bike lane is the same as a shared street. Um, they, in that uh, Mike contends that shared streets alert motorists to take another route altogether um, unless they live and work on that particular street. Yeah, yeah, Mike, you're, you're completely right. And I, I'm sorry if there was misunderstanding. I did not um, mean to convey that they are the same thing. Um, in fact, different, I think. Um, and you're right, a shared street is one where we are making it a little more inconvenient for vehicles to be on, right? And making it slower and diverting cars from there so that uh, bikes and pedestrians and motorists would feel comfortable enough to share that street. Um, so I definitely certainly, um, if that's different than a protected bike lane, um, particularly on 16th Ave in the middle section where we are not converting to a protected bike lane, um, as it stands, it is a shared street. And so, uh, that is intended to be low volume, low speed where vehicles do not, um, feel comfortable on that right now. Um, outside of that middle piece of 16th Ave, where we're converting to protected bike lane, um, that would not be classified as a shared street, that would be classified as a protected bike lane. So uh, sorry if there's any misunderstanding there. Thanks, Brett. Um, Joel asks, uh, which of these projects, if any, are on the high injury network? Um, could you spend a couple moments giving context on how these projects will make it um, safer and less dangerous um, for all users? Yeah, that's a great question. And I can take an initial um, initial stab at this. So one of the projects that's on the high injury network, and in case you don't know what that is, uh, the high injury network is are the streets in Denver that have the greatest proportion of crashes between, uh, whether it be crashes between vehicles or between bicycles and vehicles or between pedestrians. And 16th Avenue, it was actually identified as a street that is a part of that high injury network. Um, and that's particularly because uh, just the fact that there are a lot of bicycles on it. And that's one of the reasons why there, it's being upgraded to a protected bike lane is to make that street safer. Um, and that's another reason why it was addressed in the MPI or the neighborhood planning initiative 
plan was to improve that there. Um, the other, at the other end of the spectrum, a lot of the projects that we talk about tonight uh, tend to be focused on local streets. However, some of these projects cross streets that are sort of difficult uh, to be able to get across. So for example, um, some, of this, some of these bikeways that are proposed cross Broadway or they might cross York or they cross, um, they may cross Colfax, which are all streets that are identified as a part of that high injury network. So some of the, the neighborhood bikeways and the projects that are being uh, recommended as a part of this work to address improvements, particularly at those intersections. I think it was uh, Brett that brought up Littermer. So when we are looking at Larimer Street, for example, how that crosses Broadway, we'll also be looking at improving the intersection of Broadway and Larimer so that it is uh, safer. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of a, um, a quick summary of how some of these projects are addressing the, the Vision Zero goals and that high injury network. Um, Brett, feel free to add if you, if I miss anything. That's great. Great. And I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, uh, for Brett and Riley uh, from Robert, um, how many miles of road widening is the Hancock administration planning? And if you could address sort of the balance of funding for that kind of transportation improvement versus um, bike planning and pedestrian planning. So I'll take an initial step. I, I don't know miles of road widening. Um, I off the top of my head, I know it's it's not a lot and partly um, because we don't have the ability to widen most of our streets because our, our street network is, is built out. Um, so there are some streets where road widening is happening, um, particularly by the airport, like on some of the busier streets, such as uh, I think it's 56th or Tower Road where there was road widening projects completed. Um, but for the most part, because our roadway network is built out, um, we don't do a whole lot of road widening types of projects. Um, and so instead, that's why a lot of uh, what, we're, what we're doing instead is trying to come up with ways that we can more efficiently use the street network that we have to do more and be able to move more people. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great explanation, Riley. I think the only thing I'd add is there, um, I think the, it's important, there's a distinction between uh, Denver roadways and say um, things like I-70 and things like that, which are owned by CDOT, which we have uh, a, a lot less control over. So, um, but yeah, I, I would agree, Riley. Um, we, uh, I, I don't know of any real planned names of Denver roads um, in, in the near future here. Thanks, Brett. Um, I think we have one last question um, from Fred regarding uh, a particular corridor. Uh, Lawrence is it doesn't connect to an east-west facility and is and is of limited utility to uh, Clayton and Cole residents. Um, I guess the question in there being. Um, you know, is there a consideration of completing that network to make it work north, south, and east, west? So Lawrence, one of the things that we were looking at um, was connecting that into the Bruce Randolph project. Um, again, as we're kind of exploring options for Bruce Randolph, whether that be uh, redoing our design for that street or finding a different alternative, the idea is to tie whatever that east-west connection is into Lawrence Street. Um, and there's actually a project that's planned at 34th and Lawrence as part of a signal upgrade um, that's kind of designed to, uh, with the intention of, of uh, bringing that network in together. So that's something that we're trying to think about as well. Thank you. Well, thanks all for the great questions and thanks Nora for facilitating those for us. Um, just wanted to remind you real quickly that, and, and thank you again so much for taking your the time out of your evening and out of your business schedule to join us. Just wanted to remind you, if you can go back to that slide one more time, um, to please comment again on the bit.ly forward slash central CTN comment. Um, again, that is how, how we will be collecting your feedback on the, um, 
on this latest phase of designs for these projects. We will be also, uh, there's other projects that are in the works that you might not have heard us talk about tonight. Um, and those are the projects that are sort of happening at a later phase. And so we will be coming back either in the summer or the fall to present on that next round of projects um, as we continue to move forward with the process. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and end the meeting. And again, just wanted to say thank you for uh, so much for your time. If you do have any other questions, uh, again, please feel free to reach out to us at our office hours or call the project hotline. So thank you all again.